All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming this early. I'm just going to give a quick administrative remark before I pass things off to the important speakers. So my name is Alec. I am one of the members of the Law and Business Association here that's organizing the event in cooperation with the faculty. Just a couple of quick notes before we begin. On the timing, our first panel is going to run from about 8.40 to about 10 o'clock, at which point we'll have a 15-minute refreshment break, and we'll come back in for our second panel and then our keynote, which will be followed by some light lunch and networking. If at any time you are looking for the washrooms, gentlemen, immediately out of this room to your left, you'll be looking right at them. Ladies, out of the room left, left again into the atrium, follow the atrium down, into the next hallway, and you'll find them there. That's about all I have to say. I'm going to hand things off to the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Dean Paul Payton, to give some opening remarks. Thanks very much, Alec. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Legal Innovation Conference at the Faculty of Law at the University of Alberta. My name is Paul Payton, and it's my privilege to serve as Dean of the Faculty. As you will have seen, we are being recorded, so if there are comments and questions, know that you will be uh, preserved for whatever posterity ends up looking like beyond the digital age. One of the things that I wanted to do with some opening remarks is actually set the stage a little bit in terms of the why and why now uh, in terms of this dialogue. And it emerges from a few different directions. When I was in the US before being recruited up to Edmonton, yes, I was in California and I got recruited to Edmonton. Um, it was interesting in terms of the discussion that was going on at the time, not only in the Silicon Valley but elsewhere, in terms of the transformation of law. The practice of law is changing and has changed quite dramatically. Multidisciplinary practice, alternative business structures, different forms of legal services delivery. But the layering on of both globalization and technology caught the attention of the American Bar Association and in particular its Ethics 2020 Commission. I served that commission as a reporter for a couple of years and although my other colleagues had primary responsibility for what was going on with and in technology, what struck me as I was trying to work th through some of the ethics issues is how fast things are changing and how quickly we are not thinking about how fast things are changing and how the market is actually changing the way in which we're approaching before certainly regulators or ethicists or others are having the opportunity to engage it. Well, fast forward a couple of years beyond there and you know, I was taking a look just this past week at a few headlines in preparation for the conference to see you know, what are people talking about for 2018. Two of the thought leaders out of Santa Clara University's uh, Ethics Leadership Center talked about two of the trends and two of the discussion items being biometrics as a security norm and the future of augmented reality. Now, think about augmented reality for lawyers, and there's an interesting set of concepts, hopefully, that the, uh, the panel will get into a little bit. The other thing that's interesting is in terms of the way that legal education is starting to change. And I came in to U Alberta Law in 2014 with a mandate for change and change management. It's a place that needed to transform and needed to actually think forward because in terms of the way in which legal education is serving the public interest, we are in a university where the university strategic plan is entitled for the public good, we need to th think about how that actually works in terms of industry, how it works for the public, and how it works for us and for others. And there's a lot that's exciting that's going on within the university. Out of that strategic plan, the university is defining some signature areas and signature priority areas for future development. Artificial intelligence, broadly writ, is going to be one of those areas, I'm convinced. And we as a community of lawyers and law students and those who are interested in the law and in the intersections of law with technology need to be making sure that we're thinking about these issues and fully engaged. It's a continuing dialogue and debate, even with my own faculty. We had an external review this past year that talked about how we don't necessarily need to be all that concerned about what the profession thinks. Sorry, um, as a former Bay Street partner, as somebody who is very proud of the fact that 95% of our students secured articling jobs last year, I am indeed very much concerned about what the profession thinks and think that there's a great opportunity for us to work with and in the profession to make sure that we're keeping up on what's going on and not only just keeping up, but thinking forward bringing that kind of strategic forethought to what's happening with and for the profession so that we can prepare lawyers for the future in that regard. And so it was interesting where, again, the ABA had another commission on the future of legal services that came out with a report in 2016 that talked about the fact of the legal profession being at what they called an inflection point. The way in which we've practiced traditionally, bricks and mortar, out of an office, gone, largely. Although it's very important for an important part of the community. And we've got to figure out how, when, 
and why we undertake and use some of the developments that are going to be talked about in the panels this morning to that greater good. For me as an ethicist, one of the concerns that I have is what does it mean to be an ethical lawyer in that kind of context? When I was working with the Canadian Bar Association's National Ethics Committee about seven years ago, we put out a brochure called Practicing Ethically with New Technologies. It was out of date as soon as ink hit paper, in those days when ink used to hit paper. And so in that respect, at least, it's a constant dialogue. We as a faculty, we as a university, certainly have an important part to play in providing a platform for academic inquiry, for thought, for bringing people together in a conference and a session like this to engage in the dialogue and the debate. And hopefully as well to have some fun, which I know is going to actually happen with the first panel. So in that respect, at least, I'll close it there, but welcome you. Thank you for being part of this conversation. One of the things that we're working on right now is actually expanding our experiential learning opportunities. We've had some exciting developments this year. Uh, some of you may have seen the announcement of our first of its kind in Canada internship placement with the Office of the Judge Advocate General. We're currently working on an externship placement opportunity with Tech Edmonton. We're hoping to bring that forward to give our students better opportunities and more of them to be engaged in what some of you all are working with and for. So help us with that. Those of you who are in the profession or in industry or in other areas, we look forward to your contributions, to your insights, to your assistance, and I, wouldn't be, I would be remiss in my uh, job as dean if I didn't say, and to your financial support. So I'm happy to have those conversations at any time. But that's not for this morning. Uh, this morning is going to be a wonderful opportunity to hear from the experts. And before we turn it over to the panel, I first off want to say a few thanks. First off to the Law and Business Association. This conference came together um, in the intersection of a few different ideas. I'd had some discussions and conversations with people from Bennett Jones, from uh, Denton's, with Carmen McNary here in Edmonton. Everybody was talking about these ideas and saying, okay, what's the faculty doing? Similar parallel conversations were going on amongst the students, uh, with at least one of whom, before he even arrived here, Alec, uh, being notably the one who was driving force. And the Law and Business Students Association really took this on. So I congratulate Alec and Dylan and Natasha and everybody else who's involved with the Law and Business Student Association. I'm missing a few names, uh, but not missing your contributions. And so I really appreciate the uh, energy and effort that you've expended to bring this together. To all of our speakers, thank you very much, some of you coming from distances, to be part of what I know will be a great conversation. I'll leave it there and wish a good conference and a great day. Thanks so much for attending.